is Sydney's northern beaches. It's a playground for sun lovers. <laughs> where every day is a celebration. Northern beaches, go! That keeps the cops busy. Go away! Get out of my face, please! In your face! So when things get too hot... Don't you! I told you all the information I need to know. They've fallen in the uh, blowhole at Warriwood. Whilst we were dealing with these guys, he's been bottled. $550 fine, that one. These cops keep it cool. What they were doing, they were making homemade bombs and letting them off. What brings you to the Northern Beaches? This is sick. This is ice pipe. So at this stage, you're under arrest. So where are you injured? Just your hand. Keep your pants on, because it's really not impressive. Welcome to their world. All right, guys. Let's get going. This is Beach Cops. As a perfect day slides into night, the crowds are starting to gather for an evening on Manly's Corso. <laughs> but just off the main drag, there's a man slumped on the pavement. So Sky and Waddy's head straight over to check out what's going on. You can tell the story calmly. You don't have to yell at us. It seems there's been an altercation between two men in the pie shop. Yeah. Well, just listen to the officer here. She will ask you questions, you can answer them, yeah? And the cops need to hear both sides of the story. No, I want you to stay, mate, while they investigate. We've got to find out what's going on, OK? If you go to walk off, mate, I'll arrest you, because I don't know exactly what's going on. You can arrest me for walking Well, you might be a victim, you might be the person who caused it, I don't know. But at this stage, at this stage, I want to make sure you're all right, OK? You've hit the deck pretty hard, mate, OK? So they would have recorded all this. They're lying about everything. Mate, what are you doing? Just go away. It's me and you. Guys, just step back. Do you know what happened beforehand? People always think they know what's going on or what's happened and they jump in and they don't even know the person from a bar of soap and you know, if you don't know them, don't butt in. If it's got nothing to do with you, if you didn't say it, just keep walking. I don't want to answer any questions because I'm now nervous and then... Um, I will, I won't say anything. Allegedly, one of the guys has walked out of the pie shop, out of the bakery. It's been a bit of a shoulder charge and caused one of the other guy's phones to drop on the ground, so he's obviously not happy with that. He's turned around and thrown a punch at the guy um, as he was walking away, so a bit of a king hit. Oh, just wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. At the moment, you're under arrest for an assault, so just stay there. You're not free to leave. So where's the other guy being at? He's, where, he's held around the corner. The more you try and Everyone's away. aware of the one-punch laws, and he might not mean to throw the punch, but that one punch, if he had a hit the guy, you know, in a certain part of his head, could have ended quite terrible. All right, so Roy, just so you know, it's been alleged that you've been involved in an assault and you actually barged into someone else. Um, you don't have to say or do anything at this stage if you don't want to. Anything you do say or do will be recorded and can be used as evidence in court. Do you understand that? What you're going to be getting is because you've both done the wrong thing. You're going to be getting an offensive ticket. You're going to get it in the mail. Just listen, don't say a word. He's going to come, he's going to get one as well. You don't need to turn around and punch him just because he barged into you, all right? 99% of anyway, the time, I Anyway, you're don't. getting a move on direction. You're not allowed to be in the Manly CBD for the next six hours. Very cool. Do you understand well, that? I'm, you I'm need leaving. to go I'm home. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them are quite intoxicated. One's been checked out by the AMBO. He seems all right. And both are receiving offensive behaviour tickets. Just think about your actions. Be the bigger person, walk away. So angry. Donut bar, Nutella cheesecake. Oh. I don't know why I ate a salad. Give me my <laughs> Nutella donut. It was so good. What do you feel like? I'll get 20 cheeseburgers, thanks. Can you just tell them we're going with? Food yeah. is the last thing Nicole and Brendan are thinking about. These two are in a hurry. We're proceeding red to that. We'll be about two to five minutes. They're joining in a police pursuit. Three people have rammed a barrier and sped off in a stolen car. And the driver is the Northern Beaches' most wanted criminal. Aaron's evaded police for weeks after a string of robberies. And now this latest theft has sparked a chase and a major manhunt. 
Beaches 19, we're off with the Highway Patrol North. The stolen car's been dumped and the guys have tried to get away. A 16-year-old girl has been arrested, but a young boy and Aaron have done a runner. He's actually been on the run from us for quite a few weeks now. He's got a very long rap sheet. Um, he's very dangerous and um, we need to get him as soon as we can. When they ran from the car, a local tradie was right there. Oh, they just jumped out of the car and um, left the girl and she came running up the pathway here. Yeah, and the guy on a bike grabbed her. It was good. They did a good job. Kick your shoes off for me. We've got her in the back of the truck now. The male that's wanted, he lives in that unit complex just over here. Um, so police are over there now. We think he's gone into his apartment, so police are over there now trying to gain entry to that to find him. With such a high-risk offender on the run, police have every available resource looking for Aaron. Obviously, in a situation like this, we've had a vehicle, a stolen vehicle, then which has rammed into a police car that's tried to, you know, intercept that vehicle. The danger level goes up for everyone involved. He's very brazen. He doesn't really care for authority whatsoever. So this doesn't surprise yeah, me in the slightest. Um, and that's well, obviously why, um, you know, he's done it in the middle of the day. He doesn't really care if he gets caught because he just no keeps right running. He has no respect for all. anyone. Finally, the extensive search has paid off. Aaron has been found hiding in the roof cavity of his apartment and arrested. This kid's a juvenile too, Nick. With him was the third passenger in the stolen car, a 13-year-old boy. He was arrested too, and all three were taken to Manly Police Station to be charged. Did he just steal your bag? He actually stole our grain waves. Right. Can we, can we file a report? Can we charge him? Right. What did he steal? Just bag of chips. chips. He's, he's gone. He'd stolen a man's phone. Yep. Everyone on the bus was calling him a thief and telling him to get off the bus. It looks like there's a lot of thieves out tonight on the northern beaches. Oh, no. I'm at my house, Ransack. She's also concerned that someone might still be in the house. And now Gibbo and Sam are responding to a break and enter. The victim is an 84-year-old woman, and she thinks the burglars may still be in the house. Every cupboard's been opened. Every room's been undone. Oh. Oh. Daphne only uses the downstairs, but she believes someone has been sneaking in and squatting in the upstairs area, and they may have taken her keys as well. I've never had that open. Someone's got a, someone must have had a chair or must have been a tall fellow or someone. And that and I never have that that way. It's always that way. Police. There's evidence that someone's been through the house. That cupboard door's been opened. But for now, the squatters are gone. Room's clear. There's no one in the house now, okay? And we've checked well, all the windows and all the doors. The concern is that these people have her keys and Daphne's safety is paramount. So I'll make you a promise that all night I'll make a point of driving near your house, OK? Thank you so okay. much. In the meantime, they'll get a locksmith to change the locks and take Daphne back to the station to wait for her daughter. You're still a spring chicken, aren't you? How good's that? Thank you, officers, for coming. You're so welcome. <laughs> you comfy? Yes, thank you, gentlemen. All right. For all you've done tonight. We'll get you some refreshments back at the station. All right, hold tight. Watch your fingers. Back at the station, it's a strong cuppa all round. Thank you. Welcome to the cop shop. Just the two sugars, Daphne. Now put it with two cups in case it's a bit too hot for you, all right? Oh, That's all right. The next day, forensics and a crime prevention officer are at Daphne's house to dust for prints. I turned around to go inside and the door was locked. You aware of anything that's been taken from here? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Like, I had three lovely watches. I've got none now. I don't know the time. And have they been here before or is this the yes. first time? Yes. Yeah. They came. They need to find out how long these brazen squatters have been taking advantage of Daphne. 
Uh, any, anywhere that you well, think that they, they might she have touched? down here. Yeah. I didn't know this. It was 10 o'clock at night. Okay. And she had no idea. She got a shock to see me here. Yeah. And I got a shock to see her coming. She was talking to someone. It turned right. out to be a boyfriend right, okay. called Joseph. Yeah. And she said, what are you doing here? And I said, what are you doing here? All right. Well, look, if you want to show me around the front, yeah. um, and we'll we'll just walk through the scene and we'll just see it's what It's a terrible I mess, collect. I tell you. That's OK. Don't worry. That's all right. It is break and enter, it is the offence here. People that live on their own in the community are vulnerable. They can tend to be targeted by these, these people. And it doesn't take long for forensics to find some fingerprints on items in and around the house. You can see that someone at some point has definitely touched the can. Hopefully we'll get a hit back from the fingerprints and we will make some further inquiries with uh, the, the suspects from there and, and interview them and uh, hopefully lay some charges. Remember I said I'd give you a key ring? Oh, okay. okay, and it's got the police um, number on there. We have had some locks changed here, so that's a bit of relief for Daphne to know that she's now safe in her home. You get the lovely breeze from the ocean out here, fresh air. The first week of summer term has seen chaos in some schools across the country. Terror threats of bombs and shootings have triggered mass evacuations. On the second day of school in Sydney's north, south and west, an urgent response from police and the evacuations of entire schools. And now a threat has been made at a primary school on the northern beaches. It's the second one this week and Jeff and Skye are racing to get there. We will treat every bomb threat as if, as if it's a real one, because um, you just simply don't know whether this could be the one that is, is going to be real. See if they know where Beaches, they want to go. four, five, we're off at Monobar Public too. And they've arrived to a street full of worried parents. I know there's a bomb scare, and my daughter's in school here in Year One. It is very worrying indeed, you know? All available police are here at the moment. Everyone on the northern beaches is um, pretty much here at the moment. Kids are, but yes. they've all been evacuated. Yes. And I think they're moving them shortly. All the students and staff have been moved across the road. There's 1,100 of them. But the so. principal is trying to find a place to keep them out of harm's way before police start the search. We're, we're, they're stuck in the sun with no water or anything, so that's we thought we'd evacuate them. The world we're living in now, it's not like it was when we were all at school. You know, I don't. I oh know. Don't feel safe anymore. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Cheers. OK, so here's what our assistant would like. With the help of Highway Patrol, the kids are being escorted to the local RSL and well out of the area. Now the rest of the team can begin the search of the school. Just a white level inspection, so it's just a matter of walking around because you know the place. Just see if anything's out of place. If you do see something that you think suspicious, don't touch it. Just let us know. You did Lisa Hut, so I'll do the library and anything back. We've got to go through each individual building one at a time and just look for anything that looks a bit unusual and we'll just try and um, eliminate anything that's suspicious. And so we're going through everything from the classrooms to the canteen to the main hall. We can't um, miss any room because uh, that could be uh, potentially um, catastrophic. It causes a huge inconvenience to um, not only the school, but to um, the individual students, the teachers. This is uh, the second day after the uh, new kindergarten classes have returned to school, and um, it's already a very traumatic moment in their life going to school. They don't need this sort of stuff. More parents have turned up to the school, anxious to know what's going on. The search is now complete, and finally, there's some good news for those worried families. So we just had word from the um, principal and from the duty officer now that they've given the all clear, which means they're confident that there's nothing in there to be concerned about. So uh, the students will be returning the uh, classes as usual. And as 1,100 kids are walked back to school, Sky can breathe a sigh of relief. Well, yeah, my daughter actually started kindergarten yesterday. It was her first day, so... Yeah, being a mum, um, yeah, going through searching the buildings, it is 
nerve wracking. It does play on your mind that this could be at your kid's school and you do get anxious. I guess going through as a police officer, you've got to take your mum hat off, put your police officer hat on and just do what you do. Take it down now. What's for dinner, boys? It's been a quiet night shift for Ryan and Blake, but a motorcyclist at the lights has grabbed Ryan's attention. Oh, this guy was on his mobile. See that? He's just dropped his mobile because oh. he's on his mobile. What a so he's missed the lights. Want to go have a chat then? Yep, he's gone. Gone. Is he serious? That was dumb. Because he was supposed to drop it. But he's just right out for transport. Yeah, right, it's a New South Wales cycle. Mate, the reason I pulled you over is because you're using your mobile phone while you're driving, which caused you to miss an entire set of lights when you dropped it. That's right. I just felt it vibrate and just yeah. had a quick peek. And then, yeah. yeah. You discovered that gloves and phones don't mix. Not while you're also trying to balance your bike and we're going, why aren't we going? Oh, my God. And then you dropped your phone. Like, oh. <laughs> the rider is a Canadian here on a working visa. How long have you been in Australia, Simon? Uh, just over two years. He was on his way to a hot date. Going for a quick little rendezvous over at the uh, the girlfriend's place. But date night's about to become a bit more expensive. Get any alcohol tonight? I got a bottle of wine in my bag. Have you been drinking yet, bud? I had a beer 20 minutes ago. Just, uh, just blow, blow, blow. Blow a little bit harder. Harder, harder, harder. Yep, keep blowing, keep blowing. Point I said, no, you're fine. He's under the limit, but he's still going to cop a ticket for using the phone while riding. I don't give this ticket out much, but mate, on a motorbike, you know, you missed a whole phase of lights and held up everyone around you. You've got a big thing that you need a lot more control over and stuff to, to ride. I can't ride them. Uh, just got to stay off your phone, OK? So there is a ticket there for that. Yeah, stay off your phone, buddy. OK, thanks for cooperation. No worries. I'll leave you to it. Thank Drive you. safe. So what was that text message all about? I felt her phone message me and I was at a red light and I took a quick look to see if we needed to get some wine for the night. I took a quick peek and I paid the price. $320 worth. That's great. <laughs> How's that for a once over good? You have to say he's gone when you drop your mobile phone in front of a cop. Oh my god. He took it very well. It's the first time I've booked somebody on a motorcycle using a phone, uh, so it's very unusual. He's dropped it on the roadway, so he's, he's seen his phone bounce across the road. Good surf doesn't always mean safe surf, and today's massive swell has search and rescue looking for a missing swimmer. Now he's like 100 metres down the beach. Reports have come in about a body seen floating a short distance from the ocean pool. So we're at our North Narrabeen uh, swimming pool. So there's a call probably about uh, 40 minutes ago of a male that was seen floating in the surf on his back. We've done a sweep of the beaches, Taramata, North Narrabeen and Warriwood, looking for any towels that have been unattended and asked everyone on the beach if they were with anyone. No one seems to have been uh, missing at this stage. Um, so we've just got Polair and the surf life-saving helicopters up, just having a look at the moment. After a lady here said she saw something floating about 40 metres south off the headland here. They believe the swimmer may have gone out from an unpatrolled beach used only by surfers. You're looking at probably six foot swell, strong current. Um, with the rips and everything at the moment, I'd say you'd be struggling after about 15 minutes really to keep yourself up. It's pretty dangerous. One on the no way. Rescuers have used dye in the water to check which way the current is running. It's flowing north, but they've extended their search by a kilometre radius to cover all bases. See, with the helicopters there, they're eyes in the sky. They're the best tool that we've got at the moment to try and do this. Probably only got a couple of hours till it goes dark, and um, I'd say by that stage, Obviously, you want them out of the water if they're in there, and by then, it's, uh, it's not the best. What do you reckon, deeper or round? In such treacherous conditions, every sighting is treated seriously. But after 90 minutes, there's still no sign of the swimmer. We're unsure if someone was out in the surf. Um, we've done everything we can at this stage, so we're going to be coming back on with no sightings over the last hour and a half.
So as the sun goes down, Dan and Jason are called back to street policing duties. But the search goes on into the night. No body was ever found, and rescue services believe it was a false sighting. <laughs> who, who drives these cars? Are they gangsters? I'm hungry. Click. Are you alone? No. Oh. So hungry. I wish I had food in my bag to shut you up. Let's order two family meals. Yeah, I've been seeing a girl. What? She's a babe. But I'll have to meet her to approve of her. That's just like... You have to approve. Well, me and Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.